This is a follow-up video of two three-stripe mud turtle hatchlings. Um, they hatched just over a month ago here uh, at my home, and a rescued musk turtle hatchling I found while walking um, out on the street uh, just about a week ago. Now, I don't have too many good videos of the new musk hatchling, so here's a picture of it on the very first day as soon as I got it home. You can see its right eye is slightly closed, probably very dehydrated, uh, the size of a June bug. Um, and here's another picture of it looking down on the shell. You can see how tiny it is. It weighed one gram. Incredibly tiny turtle, and I'm amazed uh, that it survived. Now, here it is in the water. Um, a couple few days later, I can't remember exactly when I did this video. Very camera shy. This turtle is surprisingly friendly and unafraid of me. But when I bring the camera up, it's, uh, it scares the turtle quite a bit. And I've, I've seen this behavior before. And I'm guessing because the camera that I have is sort of the same color as the turtle, kind of a dark black um, body, it may look like a big turtle to that hatchling and it might intimidate them. So, uh, and I've had that same problem with the other hatchlings. They're okay with me, but they get a little bit nervous with the camera. And um, I, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's, or maybe they just, uh, maybe they're just camera shy. Anyway, um, here's a, another little clip of the same turtle working on an earthworm. And uh, you'll notice he suddenly realizes he's being uh, videoed. He turns and looks at the camera and he stops eating and he's hesitant. So uh, it's a kind of a problem to catch these little guys uh, when they're doing things that are really interesting without uh, ruining the whole thing. Now here, here we have the uh, mud turtle hatchlings uh, that hatched. Uh, the first one hatched on the 17th of July, the second one I believe on the 20th of July, so they're a little over a month old. They're getting very large. Uh, they started out as just a couple of grams each, very, very tiny, a little bit bigger than that musk that you just uh, were seeing. And uh, they're now, well, actually I haven't weighed them for several days, uh, they were seven and 10 grams uh, respectively, the first and the second one. The second one outgrew the first one. This is the second one. Um, you can see the energy in this little turtle. Cute as it can be, I feed them a really rich diet. They're eating um, salmon out of a can that's supposed to be wild-caught salmon. It includes the uh, bones, which um, are in the can. They're very soft. Uh, salmon naturally um, carries or has vitamin D3 in it. Uh, it's hard to find foods with much vitamin D3 naturally, but the salmon is one of those things, uh, one of those food items that do have vitamin D3. And vitamin D3 is essential for bone growth. So the salmon and the salmon bones um, provide ext an extremely rich uh, uh, nutrition for these turtles and they're growing like crazy. I also feed them uh, scallops which are uh, has calcium also and uh, a fair amount of uh, fairly high in protein. Uh, this one will eat turtle pellets the other one won't and that's just the way it is. They also eat earthworms and mealworms. Now here you see that was, now here's the first turtle, the first one born uh, in, on the July the 17th, very shy, um, and has always been a bit on the shy side and, and tends to stay in the back of the tank. This is the second born, which is um, larger and um, extremely bold and demanding, as you can see. Okay, now here we see the two of them together. It's hard to catch them together. Uh, they, they don't interact very much. I haven't seen them bite each other, which sometimes hatchlings will do. Uh, these two just kind of look at each other and uh, don't really interact. At least I have not seen them interact. But I have seen them close together, so they're not necessarily afraid of each other. Unfortunately, the white balance on my camera was incorrectly set while I was shooting this video, so everything came out with a greenish tint, so I apologize. There's the firstborn coming up for some air. And there's our secondborn. Can't tell you how much fun these guys are to watch. Just really amazing. Uh, both of these are going to be released um, probably before the second week of September. So uh, pretty quick. I've been scouting locations um, along the Hillsborough River and um, a couple of other uh, creeks uh, for good locations to release these guys. I try to keep them as far away from roads and streets as I can because I know that the natural behaviors of these turtles will have them out, especially the females will be out looking for a place to nest and they often get themselves in trouble uh, by uh, nesting too far from the, uh, the body of water and the uh, hatchlings end up in, in developed areas and they, they'll never survive. 
Now, this one has a behavior um, that, the, that the mother has, the mother turtle in the big tank, is, and that is snapping at me. Watch. I'm, I'm not sure when she does it. There. Right there. A snapping at me when it wants food. And that big female mud, that's the mother of these two turtles, does the same thing. When she's hungry, she comes up to the tank and snaps at me. Um, I guess that's uh, her polite way of asking for food. Just a bundle of energy. Anyway, I will uh, produce more follow-up videos. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm adding on a short clip here. I thought it was all done, but then I didn't get this video up on YouTube right away, and uh, today I shot another short clip of one of the three-striped mud turtle hatchlings eating some salmon bone. So I thought I would, uh, since I had mentioned that earlier in the video, I thought I would stick that up on the end here so you could uh, see how much these turtles love it. Uh, besides getting a lot of calcium from the bone itself, the salmon provides vitamin D3. Uh, I have a UVB lamp, but mud turtles don't bask a whole lot. Musk turtles bask even less. And uh, so having a nutritional source of vitamin D3 is a really good idea. The other thing that uh, the salmon bone does um, is keeps the beak worn down. Uh, the turtle beaks grow continuously throughout their lives, and when they eat normally in the wild, crustaceans, snails, that sort of thing, that, that keeps the beak from overgrowing and uh, the salmon bone. Cuddle bone does the same thing. It's an excellent way of, of helping a turtle keep its beak um, trim and a source of calcium as well. Okay, now that's it. I'll get this up on YouTube.